Good evening, and welcome to tonight's Bible study. Uh, we have worked our way up to Proverbs 28, and um, here we are, uh, almost the end of the year and almost the end of Proverbs. Uh, I'll go ahead and read the verses, and then we will give some discussion on uh, the verses. The first proverb reads, uh, picking up at Proverbs 28, The wicked flee, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. When a country is rebellious, it has many rulers, but a ruler with discernment and knowledge maintains order. A ruler who oppress the poor are like a driving rain that leaves no crop. Those who forsake instruction praise the wicked, but those who heed it resist them. Evil doers do not understand what is right, but those who seek the Lord understands it fully. Better the poor whose walk is blameless than the rich whose ways are perverse. A discerning son heeds instruction, but a companion of gluttons disgrace his father. Whosoever increase wealth by taking interest or profit from the poor amasses it for another, who will be kind to the poor. If anyone turns a deaf ear to my instruction, even their p prayers are detestable. Whosoever leads the upright along an evil path will fall into their own trap, but the blameless will receive a good inheritance. The rich are wise in their own eyes. One who is poor and discerning sees how deluded they are. When the righteous triumph, there is great elation. But when the wicked rise to power, people go into hiding. When whoever conceals their sin does not prosper, but the one who confess and renounce them find mercy. Blessed is the one who always trembles before God, and whoever hardened their heart falls in trouble. Like a roaring lion or a charging bear is a wicked ruler over a helpless people. A tyrannical ruler practice extortion, but one who hates ill-gotten gains will enjoy a long reign. Anyone tormented by guilt of murder will seek refuge in the grave. Let no one hold them back. The one whose walk is blameless is kept safe, but the one whose ways are perverse will fall into a pit. Those who work their land will have an abundance of food. But those who chase fantasies will have their fill of poverty. A faithful person will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. To show partiality is not good, yet a person will do wrong for a piece of bread. The stingy are eager to get rich and are unaware that poverty awaits them. Whosoever rebukes a person will be, will in end gain favor, rather than one with a flattering tongue. Whosoever robs his father or mother and say it's not wrong is partner to one who destroys. The greedy stir up conflict, but those who trust in the Lord will prosper. Those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them receive many curses. When the wicked, wicked rise to power, people go into hiding. When the wicked perish, the righteous thrive. Again, with Proverbs, I remind y'all that Proverbs are short saying that have um, important meaning. Um, in America, we had... Um, Ben Franklin, who wrote Proverbs in Poor Richard Almanac, and he, for example, uh, made the famous thing, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And uh, that's an important uh, proverb pointing out that something that you have in your physical hand is worth a lot more than something that you don't have. And so as we read Proverbs and we look at them, um, we see that quite often some of the re themes are repeated over and over and over again. And... Um, without wanting to sound repetitious, 
um, I try to group these and um, each week. So we see, for example, um, verse 12, when the righteous triumph, there is great elation. But when the wicked rise to power, people go into hiding. And that is again repeated in verse 28. When the wicked rise to power, people go into hiding. But when the wicked perish, the righteous thrive. And as I read and reread that, I know that we are about to change who the president of our country is. And, um, you know, that that is something that we're used to. Um, and, you know, good, bad, or indifferent, um, it doesn't matter how you voted, what party you belong to. Um, the important thing is, um, as we see good things and bad things from both sides, um, you know, um, we need to understand that when the wicked rise to power, people do go into hiding. Um, whenever the government is bad, um, you know, the good people, they get oppressed. And we see that especially in uh, communist country that turns out really to be dictators, um, how the people suffer um, monetarily, they suffer spiritually, they suffer um, socially, um, food, poverty, etc. Um, and the importance of good leadership. And so as Americans, one of the things we are reminded of is we are supposed to pray for our leaders. And again, I don't care who we voted for or didn't vote for. I personally pray every day for our president or current president. When it changed to the next president, I'll be praying for that president. We really need to uplift our leaders and hold them up because if they do wicked things, um, you know, or they do things that aren't good for, for the country, they will pay the price. Um, I want to start, though, in the beginning of this proverb. Um, I never really understood this proverb until I served as a prison chaplain. Uh, chapter 28, verse 1 says, The wicked flees, though no one pursues, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. And I remember counseling with an inmate one day, and he, because he was a drug dealer and he was afraid of the police catching him, um, he, he would tell me, Chaplain, uh, what I had to do was I would uh, be in my house and I would hear a siren outside and I would crack the, the window and peek out. Um, and, you know, I was afraid. Um, the, the wicked flees and are, though no one pursued him. And every time a siren or some gunshot or anything, he was afraid that um, the cops was coming for him or somebody was going to shoot him or something. And here's the thing. People who are doing wrong know they are doing wrong and they are afraid, uh, though no one pursues them. Um, little did that particular inmate know, he said, eventually I got caught um, and I knew I would get caught eventually. That's just nature of the game. And until he got in prison and then changed his life, he was planning to go back out and do the same thing. And this proverb is saying the wicked Please don't no one pursue them. Here this guy said, I was outside in the real world free, but I was really not free because every time the siren or a noise, I was uh, at my window, um, peeking out, dodging, and lived in fear. But the righteous are bold as a lion. Today, if the police stop me, I have nothing to fear from the police. Um, whereas a drug dealer, if the police pull them over and discover drugs, they have something to fear. And so here's the thing. As Christians, as we live our lives righteously, in right relationship first with God, in right relationship with our government and our fellow human beings, we have nothing to fear. We are as bold as lions. But people who are doing wrong, the wicked, the people who are doing wrong, they do have something to fear. And that's what that inmate taught me that day as I was counseling him. And uh, and I heard it from not just that inmate, but from hundreds of inmates that the wicked fear, though no one pursues them. We have several parts about countries and leaders, and that's why I started with that. When the country is rebellious, it has many real rulers. But when a ruler with discernment and knowledge, it maintains order. A ruler who oppressed the poor is like a driving rain that leaves no crop. And there's no better example that we can see of rulers who oppress the poor that right now we have North Korea, we have Venezuela, we have uh, all these communist dictatorship type countries that um, 
you know, a ruler that oppressed the poor is like a driving rain that leaves no crop. The people are starving. They have little or nothing to eat. Um, they have little or nothing to show for life, etc. Um, and so we'll see that repeat several times throughout this one about leadership, how important it is. And we live in America, um, and thank God we get to vote, and it's not a hoax vote, you know, like in Russia that they already predetermine who is going to win. We get to pick our leaders. Um, picking up at verse 4, it says, Those who for forsake instruction praise the wicked, but those who heed it resist them. And um, learning is one of those things. Uh, just because I'm out of school or you are out of school or we are older, never forsake instruction. The wicked forsake instruction and praise those. But, and, but we as Christians, we are always learning. Uh, I've read the Bible the first time as a teenager 40 years ago. And I'm still reading it and I'm still learning from it. As a matter of fact, um, you figured I've read it 40 times through completely every year. Uh, how come every year I run across a passage I've never seen before or an idea I've never thought of before? The reality is never forsake instruction and learning. Uh, I, I especially like verse 5. It says, evildoers do not understand what is right, but those who seek the Lord understand it fully. And we must understand that um, as Christians, the most important thing is our relationship with God and seeking to understand our relationship with God and that uh, we understand what is right, not because we are good and right in and of ourselves, but because God loves us and adopted us and put us on that right path. Uh, verse 6 talks about uh, a very important theme. It's better to be poor whose walk is blameless than to the rich whose ways are perverse. Again, uh, we see, for example, in Venezuela, in um, Cuba, in um, North Korea, all these countries, they have some rich people. And we don't see that as much here in America. Uh, originally, I'm from Belize, and I've visited Guatemala um, and other countries like that. Um, and we have a, they have a bigger divide between rich and poor. And the Bible is saying it's better to be poor and walking upright and to be rich and to be perverse. And um, because dishonest gain is one of those things that we will see here because um, it, the, the verses, and let me read the verses and then we will see what I'm talking about. It says, a discerning son heeds instruction, but a companion of glutton disgrace his father. Verse eight, whosoever increase wealth by taking interest or profit from the poor, a it for another who will be kind to the poor. And one of the things that we see is that people who are taking advantage of the poor, um, the Bible definitely says that's not right and that God is the God and champion of the poor and that it is better to be poor and walk with God and be blameless than to be rich and companions of glutton and to, to um, oppress the poor. Goes on and says, if anyone turns a deaf ear to my instruction, even their prayers are detestable. Uh, verse 9, if anyone turns a deaf ear, and instruction, learning, is so important. Um, and again, it doesn't matter what age. I mentioned I've been doing this for over 40-something years now, um, studying and reading. And I, I, I encourage you all, I don't know how old you are as you all are listening. Some of you, most of you all probably are older than I am. But keep learning. Um, verse 10 says, whosoever lead the upright along an evil path will fall into their own trap, but the blameless will receive a good inheritance. Because ultimately, um, we are all called upon to make sure that we lead other people in the right way. Um, if we lead somebody to the wrong way, in reality, we are just leading ourselves to that pit. And so that is a, a very important proverb. Uh, verse 11, the rich are wise in their own eyes, one who is poor and discerning, see how deluded they are. And there's nothing worse than to be a, a deluded person, to, to be a know-it-all in your own eyes. And I think um, the best example I have of this is from Fiddler on the Roof. 
Um, I don't know if any of y'all are a big fan of Fiddler on the Roof. I am. As a matter of fact, I watch it at least once a year. It's a very long movie. Um, but one of the songs that Tevier sings is If I Was a Rich Man. And he said, if I was a rich man, people would come to me for advice. And it wouldn't matter if I gave them good advice or not. The reality, because I'm rich, they would think that I, uh, I know what I'm talking about. Um, and the thing is, Tevier pointed out that rich people, because they, don't, they, they have money and they can rely upon themselves for their own sustenance, they don't rely upon God. And uh, poor people rely on God. And... Uh, and that's the thing that we talked about in, you know, the, the proverb, not the proverb, but the um, beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We need to realize that we're spiritually poor, but also it's a physically poor person, people that don't have money, that realize that they are dependent and that they do need God. And rich people think, oh, I don't need God. I'm wise in their own eyes. But we who are truly poor, spiritually poor, or, or even have, you know, we're not... Bill Gates or or any of those um, Buffett or any of those super wealthy people, the poor people, not just poor, but the second part of this, one who is poor and discerning, and that's the key to this verse, discerning. We need to be discerning. We need to understand um, that true riches is not just money, but it's friends, it's family, it's, um, you know, helping each other, um, it's having enough, um, and true riches is not just money, and and, and that's the thing, um, I've known people who are super rich, but they really can't um, relax and be themselves because they are afraid somebody is going to steal money from them, or kill them, or kidnap them, or whatever, and so poor people who are discerning, discerning, and that's the key to it, sees how deluded they are, just because they're rich doesn't mean they have all the answers. And the most important answer we have is the gospel, the good news. Um, verse 13 reads, Whosoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confess and renounce them find mercy. And I want to talk about this for a minute. Um, because people... It's, it's a normal reaction for us as human beings. Whenever we do something wrong, for example, if we trip and fall, you know, we look around and see, hey, nobody noticed, you know, pretend like, you know. Um, whenever we do something wrong, um, as human beings, it's automatic. We want to, to, to cover it up. I mean, that's what Adam and Eve did. You know, they blame, we, we blame, we complain, we cover up what, when we're wrong. But as Christians, one of the things that we have learned to do is to realize we are sinners and to throw ourselves on God's mercy and accept His forgiveness and to renounce our sin and strive to live holy lives. And I, I want for us to hear that because if we try to cover up our sin, we will not prosper. Even though we are accepted by God and we have, you know, we're Christian, if we try to cover up sin, we will not prosper. And so, even I as the pastor, I, 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 if I do something wrong, I'm the first person to admit, hey, I mess up. And the reason is, is because ultimately, as David wrote in, in, you know, in Psalms, against God and God only have we sinned. So whenever I do something wrong, I, I, I admit it. And that's the, the spirit that we need to do. Whenever we do something wrong, admit it. Don't try to cover up our sin. After all, people know um, uh, pretending and trying to cover up doesn't help at all. But the scripture goes on, but the one who confess and renounce them find mercy. And not only do we find mercy from God and forgiveness from God and acceptance from God, but if we truly uh, regret, repent, that's another renounce, repent of our sin and try to get in right relationship with people, um, they will forgive us. As human beings, as Christians, we are a loving, forgiving people. And if a person truly repent and confess and turn back to the right way, we accept them. Um, and, and that's what that scripture is about. A very important proverb um, in the midst of all this. Uh, verse 13. It goes on and said, Blessed is the one who always tremble before God, but whosoever harden their hearts fall in trouble. And 
it is a blessing. Like I mentioned, the beatitude. Blessed is the one who really turned to God. And as Christians, that's the most important thing. Not only do we confess our sins, we repent of our sins, but we, 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 we turn to God to provide for our needs. On the other hand, just the opposite. Verse 15 says, Like a roaring lion or a charging bear is a wicked ruler over helpless people. Um, wicked people, um, you know, and I said, uh, uh, being in the prison ministry, um, they, they think that, you know, roaring lion, charging bear, they can do whatever they want. But in reality, they, they will get their, their practice. Um, coming back to rulers, that idea that we started out, a tyrannical ruler practice extortion, but one who hates ill-gotten gains will enjoy a long reign. And the thing that we see about um, communism, it fell in Russia, it will fall in other, because in reality, um, it starts out with a good idea that we'll all be share and share alike, but the rulers then become dictators and uh, tyr tyrannical leaders. They do practice extortion. They extort the people. They force them in forced labor and stuff. Eventually, people rise up against them. The system collapses. I hope and pray for our leaders because ill-gotten gains never last, but good real rulers enjoy long reign. Verse 18 continues, The one whose walk is blameless is kept safe, but the one whose way are perverse will fall in their own pit. And that's what I mean is eventually um, the leaders who are bad, uh, they may get away with it for a while. They may get away with it for a while. Um, but eventually it catches up with them. And, and that's the thing that we need to understand is um, bad leaders, um, bad people, eventually it catches up with them. They fall in their own pit. Uh, switching the ideas now um, to something personal. Um, verse 19 says, Those who work their land will have abundant food. Those who chase after fantasies will have their fill of poverty. And um, again, this is a repeat of some of the themes we have had in the past. Um, if we work and produce you know, the scripture talks about working your own land. Um, they will have food. Um, unfortunately, in America today, there are too many people who want something for nothing. Um, the government uh, will give them everything, um, you know, homes, food, etc. That, that won't last forever. The scripture said those who work will have abundant food. And, and I encourage all Christians that we do need to work. Um, that's what the Bible teach, to provide for ourselves and for our family and for others. Unfortunately, too many people have what I call get-rich-quick schemes. Get-rich-quick schemes never work. I want to repeat that. Get-rich-quick scheme never work. The scripture said, but those who chase fantasies will have their fill of poverty. Almost all get-rich-quick schemes end up being just fantasies and doesn't get rich. They just stay poor and such. And I know about this. Um, I have a brother who's three years older than me, and he was always into some kind of get rich quick scheme, you know. And I remember as a teenager, um, I fell for it. I have to admit I fell for it. I had uh, uh, saved up some money, about $5,000 by age 16, because I was going to go to college um, that I had. Um, I had more than that, really, but I, he, and, he and I got talking, and he talked me into buying a car for a couple thousand dollars and to fill it up with some goods, and that we would drive it from Texas, where we live, down to Belize, and then we will sell the car for more than twice what we paid for it, and we would sell all the goods, and basically my 5000 would um, more than double, and, we, and he, I would pay him for helping me drive the car and the goods to Belize and my 5000 would turn out to be 10000 and you know I was all for it I, I put my 5000 I bought the car I fronted the money for gas and I fronted the money for you know you name it for the, all the goods we packed into the car and we started off we made it as far as Houston which is a couple hundred miles away and he stopped and you know visiting this person and that person the car broke down I ended up um, sleeping on the floor, pushing the car on the highway, 
get rich scheme. Um, I finally walked away from the 5,000 after about four days and um, uh, ended up in losing the money. As a 16 year old, losing 5,000 was hard, but it le I learned a lesson. There's no get rich quick scheme. Um, you have to work hard. And if you chase after fantasy, you'll have your fill of poverty. Um, this brother did, did manage to take the car down to Belize, did sell it, did make some money off of it. I never saw my money, um, the money that I put up, nor the profit. Um, I, I instead went off to college with the money that I had left and um, decided, you know what, lesson learned. Um, what an important lesson though, because over the years as he came back with other ideas or schemes of how to get rich quick, I said, no, no thank you. Uh, those things don't work out. Verse 21 says, to show partiality is not good, yet a person will do wrong for a piece of bread. And um, people who fall for this, and the piece of bread to represent something of value. Um, if we sell ourselves for money or for whatever, that's what it's talking about. Don't show partiality. Um, it's not good. Um, don't sell ourselves short for anything. It continues with um, the idea of rich and poor people again. Verse 22, the stingy are eager to get rich and are unaware that poverty awaits them. And I want to talk about this for a few minutes that we have left. Don't be stingy. I know um, people um, are stingy. They are misers. They penny pinch. Um, and they think that um, by penny pinching, they will get ahead. The reality is stinginess um, the reason they're stingy is they're afraid to run out of money. Um, they, they will be poor and stuff. They, they want to be rich. In, in other words, don't do that. As a matter of fact, God is a good, loving, generous God. And we as children of God are supposed to be good, loving, and generous. Don't be stingy with your material goods nor yourself, as a matter of fact. Because stinginess, if a person is stingy, and, and I've seen a miser who... Um, you know, penny pinch and live off of cheap food and um, uh, penny pinch everything and put money away. Um, I heard a story as a kid where this guy was going around town picking up cans and uh, was a miser. Every money he got, he put, you know, away. In reality, all those years, he lived in poverty and then he died. And it turned out that he had over 200,000. You have to remember, this was 50 years ago, you know, 200,000 back then was a lot of money. But here this guy went around town in rags, picking up cans, stingy, miserly. In reality, he was afraid of being poor. And at the same time, he, he had all this money and was living in poverty. So stingy are eager to get rich. Yet a person that is unaware Poverty awaits them, and the poverty is a poverty of them imprisoning themselves in poverty, even though they have money. Verse 23, I, I love this verse. It says, Whosoever rebukes a person will in the end gain favor, rather than the one who has a flattering tongue. And I've repeated this one. This is a lesson we have learned over the um, last 28 weeks, um, over and over again. Um, don't flatter if you, if I, I keep telling y'all as uh, members of the church, if I do something wrong, don't flatter me just because I'm the pastor. Tell me, um, rebuke me. Um, I would rather know up front than to, um, to have a person flatter me to my face and stab me in the back. And that's what this verse is talking about. Whosoever rebukes a person will in the end gain favor. Because if you point out my faults, I can learn from it and correct if you don't point out my faults, and, and, and that's the same for y'all. If I see somebody do something wrong, and as a chaplain in prison um, for years, um, you know, whenever an inmate did wrong, I'd point out to them, hey, that's wrong. That's part of my job um, as a leader and as a, especially a spiritual leader. If we're doing what is wrong, we need to correct it and get on the right path. Um, verse 24 talks about, again, greed and selfishness. Um, it says, whosoever robbed their father or mother and saying it's not wrong is a partner to those who destroy. Uh, greed, gluttony, etc. 
Verse 25 continues with that. The greedy stir up conflict, but those who trust in the Lord will prosper. Um, trusting in the Lord is so important. So verse 26, it says, those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. And trusting in uh, self, trusting in the government, trusting in money, trusting in anything else other than God makes you a fool, you and me a fool. As a matter of fact, ultimately, the only person that we can trust in is God. Um, too many people put their trust in the wrong places, trust in themselves. One of the early Americans says, a person who has himself for a lawyer is a fool. And this is true here. Whosoever put trust in themselves to represent themselves and think they know all the answer is a fool. Uh, I put my trust in God. I put my trust in God through Jesus Christ. Um, I don't put my trust necessarily in the American government. We see it's changing. It will change again. Um, that's just reality. Um, you know, it be it two years, four years, or six years, they, we vote them in and out. Um, ultimately, as Christians, our trust is in God. Don't trust in the government in the sense that, you know, we do everything that, for them and such put our trust in God. But those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. Last couple of verses, and I know I'm a little bit over today, but I don't have confirmation, so I don't have to prepare for that. It says, um, how we deal with other people, especially the poor. Those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them receive many curses. Um, as people of God, not only are we called on to do what is right, but part of being doing what is right is to help those less fortunate. And um, so when we give, give generously. Um, my philosophy is give generously and receive generously. Um, that's the way we should be. Uh, if we see someone in need, we should try to help them. As a matter of fact, I learned this as a young person. Um, when I was first coming up and I had nothing to give, I, I, I realized that I was poor and um, it made me feel less than. But when I started giving, the more I gave, the more I felt good about myself. And the more I became generous and the more I give and helped others, the more I realized I lack nothing. The fact that I can give mean I have something to give. And so that proverb is so right. Those who give to the poor will lack nothing. People who are givers and generous lack nothing. People who are stingy and miserly lack. And they lack because they themselves Put themselves in that situation. Uh, with that, we will end for we already talked about wicked people, um, good people going to hiding because of wicked rulers and such. And I keep praying for our government. And I will see y'all next week. Um, thank you.